Hi again, everyone. Welcome to those who've just joined us. Thank you for joining us for our very exciting hospitality and catering session. This session is going to be presented by three of our amazing tutors at the Manchester College. Plus, we have a very special guest, Simon Wood, who will be joining us shortly live from his restaurant here in Manchester. Throughout the session, please feel free to use the Q&A box to the right of your screen and ask any questions you may have. We will do our very best to answer them all at the end of the session. Now, I would like to introduce you to Mark to get the session started. Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, great having you here today for our event. It's great that you can join us. Uh, we've got a great uh, setup lined this afternoon uh, with a superstar who's just been mentioned, which is Simon Wood. Um, I'd first and foremost, I'd like to uh, send a, a, apologies on Maxine Gunning's uh, part, who's our head of department. Uh, so she'll look, she's happy to see you in September and very much welcome, like to welcome you to the college. So we do an amazing array of things at the Manchester College, but I'm going to allow each and every other tutor to talk to you about that because it's their specialisms and the amount of work what we do together also with Catherine from the Chefs Forum, which she'll be able to tell you more about in just a second. I would also like to remind you that we have quiz questions going on throughout the session, so you'll need a pen and paper or even a phone to take down the questions and you'll need to have them submitted by this coming Friday at 12 o'clock. An email will follow for later on in the event. So without further ado, I'd like to invite you over to Catherine, who is now with Simon over at his restaurant. Thank you, Mark. You're, wel you're welcome. So um, can you see me, everybody? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, no, it's, it's a great honour to be involved in this event today to showcase the fantastic work we're doing with the college um, to also introduce you to Simon Wood, who's actually the patron of the Chefs Forum Academy at the Manchester College. Um, we're, we're so delighted that he agreed to support the college in this way. And um, it's just a great programme of curriculum enrichment that sees top chefs from all, around, all over Manchester and hospitality professionals come into the college and deliver guest lectures to enrich the curriculum that you're going to be learning at the college. So, for example, at the start, you know, young chefs might learn how to make stocks and sauces. So we'll then get a great chef like Simon, you know, to come in and showcase his signature stock that he might teach all his new chefs when they join the restaurant. Um, so we just want to show you a little film to begin with. Um, it's of uh, the launch of the Chefs Forum Academy at the Manchester College. Um, we were lucky enough to have Simon with us. We had James Martin, who you often see on TV most Saturdays. And we had Lisa Goodwin Allen, who's our other patron from uh, Northcote. And we had um, Andrew Nutter, we didn't we? Yeah. So we're just going to have a little uh, look at this film to show, show you what we do. And then... Uh, and then we can uh, meet Simon and find out a little bit more about him and his life uh, as a chef. So we just need to switch from the couch to college background now. Share audio. Share audio and then share screen. Share audio? Amy? Yes? We just want to uh, share. Oh, it's OK. That's so we just need to enable the audio. Okay, if you, if you just go on to the to the video, you can come off that screen. If you go on to the to the video, so back onto the teams. This one. This one. And then we do a share this one. 
no, no, this one here. OK, yeah, just um, share your screen again. Let me just do enable audio first. Come that one again there, because I'll share the screen that we've got. And then just let you know you are live. Hey. <laughs> Can't share the audio. Just need to go back onto that one, I think. Um, and then we do, is it at the top here somewhere? We need to do the share audio. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You're now sharing. Now we can share the screen. That's perfect. Uh, system audio and then you press play. Can you can you hear me? We can't hear the sound unfortunately. Hi guys, we couldn't, unfortunately, we couldn't hear the sound on that, but what we'll do, we'll put the um, the link into the, it, the, the link's gone into the, the Q&A box there at the side, so people will be able to, to have a watch of that. That's fantastic, Amy, thank you for that. Um, so what the day was all about then, just to give you an idea, is um, the, the chefs came in to cook with the students in the kitchens that you're going to be learning in, you know, so it's fantastic college kitchens, you know, equipped with the latest equipment and uh, the best lecturers so you've really just rest assured that this college is fantastic it's the, it's the only college in the north of the uk to offer the chef's forum academy to offer this program of curriculum enrichment and to offer you the opportunity to be introduced to such fantastic local employers i mean simon you've actually had students from yeah, the college been in the kitchen here and had to try yeah been in the kitchen for trial shifts and that's what it's all about you know it's, it's given you the confidence to approach chefs that you might have only seen on tv before to actually you know have them in your kitchen and realize they're just normal people like you and i fantastic local employers who are looking for young chefs and, and hospitality professionals to join their businesses and this college gives you that opportunity so without further ado i'm going to introduce you properly to uh, simon wood so simon wood uh nice to see you and thanks very much for having us here thank you hi everyone so um, we are at Woods uh, Restaurant Manchester. So how long ago did you open the restaurant, Simon? Uh, we opened three years ago almost. So the uh, 1st September, 31st of August, that was our opening 
opening night. Uh, so it's it's been a quick three years and a lot's changed for sure. Well, especially recently. I mean, uh, so at, at the moment, you know, you've won you've won some accolades here. So tell us about those. Yeah. So, I mean, after six months, we got a, a couple of rosettes from the AA guide, which is we haven't been judged again since. But I think it'd be very different if we got judged now. Um, we've retained every year a Michelin recommendation which is, you know, they're the accolades that I, I want to be pushing for. Um, we won Manchester's leading restaurant last year. Um, I won leading chef of the year uh, this year for, for Manchester, which considering that man, I won a star, I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, we, we, you know, we've had some good accolades. It's, it's been good, but there's, there's more hard work to do yet. Brilliant. I mean, you're a fantastic role model for young chefs coming through. Um, so tell us about the day you spent at the college working with obviously James and Lisa that we just saw in the video. How was that from your point of view? Yeah, it was good fun. You know, I, I'm quite happy to, to walk despite not being doing this since college, for example. Um, it just goes to show that you can come into this industry at any time and achieve great things. It doesn't really matter where you come from or what you know. If you if you apply yourself and work hard, you can get whatever you want. It was, it was a good day, good fun. Excellent. So what are you doing at the moment? Now you've just reopened. How many weeks have you been open for now? Um, we did the home delivery during lockdown, yeah. but in all in all honesty, full on restaurant service. We've been open. This is day four. Day four. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, feels like day 44, I'm not going to lie, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've all been working extremely hard. So tell us about the new kind of menu concept you're running at the moment. So we opened three years ago and, you know, we needed to find out um, place in the market you're coming up against at the time, Aid, Aid and Burn, got Adam Reed at the French, now we've got Simon at Manor and, and various other top end restaurants. Now to find a, a comfortable balance took a while and um, lockdown gave me some time to reflect and really focus on my dreams and my ambitions and, and that's pushing myself for, for serious accolades in, in a Michelin environment, that's what I want to do. Um, we're tasting menu orientated at the minute, although we do do an entry level tasting menu. So. That's for people that are maybe intimidated by a tasting menu and think they might get things that they, that they don't like. So they can come in and I'll let them pick the three middle courses. Yeah. I have a choice of three, but I'll bookend that with snacks, bread, uh, an amuse bouche, and then petty fours at the end. So your three courses is actually, is actually six courses. Yeah. So kind of whether you like it or not, you're getting a tasty menu, but you control the middle portion. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. So we've actually got a prize of a tasting menu for two at Simon's Restaurant as a prize for this quiz. In fact, there's £150 worth of prizes. Our first prize would be a tasting menu for two here at Woods Manchester. Or we've got um, a second prize of an Oliver Harvey chef jacket, which you can see modelled by Alex and also uh, Mark there. So uh, that's a local brand of chef jacket. And actually made here in Manchester, so it's great. And you use them here as well. Yeah, we do. You, we Simon? use the jackets on the aprons from all of Harvey, yeah. So then that's fantastic. So you can get all the gear before you uh, before you start. And also then the third prize is Simon's book. So you wrote a book, didn't you, Simon? Yeah, shortly after winning MasterChef in that following year, I, I wrote my, my first book. Hopefully there's another one to come, a, a bit more of a, a coffee table cookbook to come, yeah. hopefully. But the first one is very much focused at the, the amateur fine dining chef at home. Uh, so perfect yes. for students, obviously. Um, so, you know, that'd be a real nice one to add to the collection, yeah. won't it? And uh, so we're just going to go through um, some interview questions now with Simon. Um, and we'll send you the links to the videos that we were going to play um, at the end, I think, because that would be uh, better. So you can actually see the video of Simon when he got told that he won MasterChef. Um, so tell us about, but I'm going to ask you live now, tell us about when you won MasterChef, how was it for you? Um, there's a couple of sides to it. Um, there's the side I won on January the 22nd, but it wasn't screened until April the 25th. So I went back to work in data science, knowing what had happened, mm. petrified that uh, everything's about to change, no media training. I couldn't do my basic food hygiene certificate. It's a professional qualification. You're not allowed it until you've been shown to win. All kinds of different things. Yeah. I wanted to start my own business. I wanted to book in stagiaires, which, you know, I couldn't do any of that. So for three months, I went back to my role, usual stuff, watch match of the day, went to work in the office Monday to Friday. And then all of a sudden overnight, I'm on the BBC Red Sofa. <laughs> I went to work at Marcus Waring's restaurants, all of them in London, Theo Randall at the Intercontinental and Simon Rimmer's Greens over in Didsbury. Yeah. Um, I was at the Edinburgh Press Awards. I was out having drinks with Matt Richardson and uh, everything was like turned on its head. It was a the funny, whirlwind yeah. really of media um, stall for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for me, it wasn't mm. it wasn't about any of that. It was mm. about 
getting into a kitchen um, and getting my own restaurant, which is, you know, th th my last words in the MasterChef kitchen, John said to me, what are you going to do? And a lot of people on MasterChef, they, they write a cookbook and they go on food demos and stuff like that. And I like to think that I've made the most out of it and I've, I've got or set the benchmark for what people can do after MasterChef. There are people that have now gone on to open, f from what I can see, I've, I've not actually been yet, but positive restaurant restaurants. Yeah. And you can be more than just a, someone off the telly that can cook a bit. Yeah. Um, I'm, you know, I wanted to be a professional chef. I wanted my own brigade. I wanted a, a chain of restaurants, which I've got. Um, and, you know, if you work, like I said, it's about hard work. If you teach yourself, apply yourself and then you can get whatever you want. Absolutely, you know, that's great, great advice, really. Um, so where did your passion for cooking come from and where did you learn your skills? Um, a lot of my skills are self-taught. It's a it's an obsession more than anything else. Um, I've got a lot of fond memories from my grandma from when I was young. I spent like weekends there. Dad died at a young age, uh, so mum was at work, went to grandma's and that's where you kind of learn, particularly when I grew up in the late 80s, um, that there's more to life than Finder's crispy pancakes and <laughs> like chippy on mm -hmm. a Friday and all fish fingers and, and the rest of it, which is all fine. Mm -hmm. But there's things out there like rabbit stew and different, like tripe for want of a better example, but it's different food that I bet you ask any kid in college now, what's tripe? They'd all look at you and go, yeah, they would. Yeah. But you know, there's, there's so much. It's traditional ingredient, yeah, isn't it? That... It's not something I'd probably put on the menu to be fair. Oh, but... really? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's you know there's so much more to food out there than what than you know greg's yeah. mcdonald's Nando's, whatever it is yeah. if people open their eyes and look at traditional cookery there's there's a lot of classic flavor combinations that people just aren't aware of mm. and, and need to be so that's you know my, my grandma influenced me massively and stuff like that from baking to stews to you know pigeon rabbit liver and onions things like that and they're all great flavor combinations but no one really knows how to cook it properly so they have it and think oh, that's awful <laughs> but it's mm, not mm. it's badly cooked so this, yeah. this, you know i i learned from there really and then self like i say self-taught obsession youtube social media cookbooks tv cookery shows and you can get knowledge from anywhere you, you yeah every day to school day isn't it Always. and you can never stop learning mm. You know, and no, even, no, even, even the best chefs with social media these days all learn off each other, don't they? Yeah, I think if you stop, you stagnate, you'll get old, you'll get dated and you won't survive. Exactly that. So, yeah, no, all good. So what do you enjoy most about being a chef? Um, I like cooking. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it sounds silly, but to be able to come in and do what I enjoy every day, you know, I'm, a, I'm not, I'm hands on in the kitchen. I'm, I'm first in, I'm last out. It's my menu. It's my music, it's my tablecloth, it's my cutlery, it's my pots, it's my flow of the menu, order, everything is the way I want it done. And it's it's not just about the food, it's about the entire customer journey and experience. Yeah. Um, from the snacks in the lounge through to the, the way like the bar host takes the person to the table, to the bread course, to the flavoured butter, to the amuse bouche, right the way down to the way that we make the pat de fouille which is made out of one of our signature cocktails so that you, there's, there's tying all the way through the entire thing. And to be able to put a, a process in place that encompasses your entire dream, and it is. Mm. Every time someone comes in this restaurant, I want it to feel like we've got the place ready just for them. Lovely. And that's the way I want it. And to be able to control that and orchestrate it as an employer, as a chef, uh, and especially coming from my background as well, yeah, I, I really enjoy it. I'm passionate about it, and that, that's that's my dream, and I'm doing it. Well, no, that's communicated through everything you say, you do, and you know the fact that we've seen this restaurant here, and you know what you've achieved as well since winning Master Chef. I think is a massive accolade to anybody coming in to the business. You know, they can see exactly, you know, what you can achieve if you get your head down, work hard, um, and have ambition, which is what Simon has in absolute spades. So it's a, it's just great to hear and great to see. It's it's very inspirational. Um, so, name three ingredients you couldn't cook without, Simon. I'm going to cheat on one and say salt and pepper. Yeah. One ingredient. That doesn't count on <laughs> one. <laughs> Unsalted yeah. butter. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to throw thyme in there as well. Oh. But if I can only have the two, salt, pepper and butter. Okay, yeah. salt, pepper. It's not two though, it's three. <laughs> anyway, you do have to learn to count if you are a chef yeah. as well. So, which piece of kitchen equipment could you not do without? 
definitely in my Io Shen knives. I love my knives. Um, What's good about Io Shen? I just I like them. They're, for me, they're a right. They're, they're a nice fit. Are they Japanese? Yeah. 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 They're, they're, so it's they're a nice fit, isn't it? And so yeah. don't get me wrong. I'm mm. the same as everyone else. I've got like, a Victorinox pastry, pastry knife, which I really like as well. But yeah. I, I like my Io Shens. They 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 balance. They sharpen well when you're doing precision dice and things like that. It's important. A sharp knife is important. And also the weight of it in your hand. It's very, yeah. very um, subjective, isn't it? Yeah. You know, the knife we, you use, we did, like the pen you use. Yeah. And we did um, wood at home, the delivery service during lockdown. We needed to do what we could to make the restaurant survive. So I'd like to profess that I invented fine dining takeaway before all the other chefs invented it. We did it on week two. Yeah. Everyone else is just starting some of them. So yeah. um, I one day um, had to do, we did a celeriac risotto and we had to dice celeriac the size of rice. Um, it's just so happens that the, the delivery service took off and I ended up with, I think it was around 230 portions of it on order and just me in the kitchen. That's just one course, one starter. So is there a name for that size? <laughs> Unlike me or something like that. You know? It's just a fine dice. Yeah. And, and at that time when you're in, when you're up against it like that, um, you appreciate a sharp, nice knife. <laughs> exactly. No, absolutely. Um, so, um, you talked about the fact that you're a fan of traditional cookery. I like traditional cookery <laughs> techniques and flavours, but I yeah. like to have a modern interpretation on different things. I think I wouldn't pigeonhole, my, pigeonhole myself into, like, for example, maybe like Le Gavroche, you mentioned the water side of braid, that, that style of traditional cookery. I, yeah. I, I like to take the best bits out of every yeah. style yeah. and incorporate the, them into my flavours. Now, my brief for myself is classic flavours serve with playful authenticity. Yes. Now that means that no one should come in here and not understand what they're going to get. Mm. You know, there will be a core element to any dish, for example, cheese and tomato. It works. Everyone knows it works. Yeah. How do we make that? You know, salmon and, and horseradish, all kinds of different balances of flavours. And that's what we try and do. And it's it's a challenge yeah. to, to make that look like, you know, Michelin recommended food. Yeah, no, wonderful. And you're you're very much setting your sights on on Michelin recognition. You've been in the Michelin recommended for the last two years, is yeah. that right? Yeah. And so ultimately, you aim for a star. Listen, I think anyone that works at this level and doesn't want one is maybe telling fibs. Mm. Um, it's always in the back of your mind. Mm. It's certainly in mine. I'm not going to lie. I'm ambitious. Yeah. Whether I'm good enough to get one, that remains to be seen. But people come in and eat, eat the food, and then we'll see, won't we? I think the food at the minute, we've got four new tasty menus so we've got regular vegetarian pescatarian and vegan tasty menus all those menus are bookended with a couple of snacks a bread course crossover course to take your palate from savory to sweet and we've got petty fours you know there's, there's it's around 16 courses of, of different variations and styles of food and you know that much work is admirable it, and it's there, there's no there's no gimme courses in my menu if that makes sense it's, mm. it's everything's made with purpose if it's not we don't just have a vegan dish and then plonk that across every menu because when we've got one yeah it's bespoke to that menu that's this is just for you because that's what you want yeah and that's what we do so yeah i've, I've got my sights up on on high accolades for sure Brilliant. So vegan is a massive food trend at the moment, as I'm sure a lot of you have seen. You know, we've got a plant-based restaurant um, yeah, springing this up. One just around the corner. Exactly. I've seen the builders in yeah, there yeah. today. You know, it's huge. It's massive at the yeah. moment. Plant-based vegan is a massive food trend for 2020. I know, you know, COVID got in the way of many of the food mm -hmm. trends, uh, but also you're also um, championing lacto fermentation. Yeah, we're, we're fiddling around with a little yeah. bit of fermentation at the minute. We're making some Nocorino wine, but. We've got a really good, it's actually a vegan course. It's a, it's a artichoke, purple potato, purple potato twill, sorrel for the acidity. And then we've got a, a lacto fermented blueberry in there, which you'd think blueberry and truffle and like you'd go, it's not quite tell right. Us, tell us the definition of lacto fermentation, because so, it's quite hard to say. Yeah, it's, it's, it's essentially. <laughs> Is it hard to do? No, not really. <laughs> no. I mean, there's some trial and error. You can do it with absolutely anything. Um, we. We do it with um, plums at the minute. Now, we haven't found a use for the inside of the plum. We're working on it. But what we have found is if we've got, I think we had 25 kilos of plums come in yesterday. And you match that weight with 2% salt. We, we then bag them up and leave them for a week. We'll turn them and, and there's a, a structural change to the acidity and everything that's, that's in the product. And you end up with a different flavor 
from that product. But what we do with the plums in particular is we peel the skins off after eight days and then we dehydrate them. Now you can powder that and it actually comes out like the most intense, salty, sweet plum sherbet that, that you can imagine. Now, 25 kilos is a lot of work. Yeah, um, So you only get a little bit on, the, a bit on the plate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's, there's things like that that we do. We do a carrot one as well. It's like it goes on a mallard dish mm. using tangerine root from the forager. Yeah. So like the dishes and the, just on that one dish, you've got 10 days worth of work for different things. Tangerine root comes from duck ponds in stately homes and you've got to bring it to the boil 15 times and discard the water. Then we grate it through honey and infuse that at a certain temperature and brush the mallard with it and stick carefully toasted spices on it. So all the classic flavours are there in the dish. Mm. You've got mallard, duck, yeah. you've got orange, tangerine, Yeah. you know, plum goes yeah. with duck as well. And we're mixing, it's playful, it is, but it's authentic. Yeah. Duck and plum works, duck a l'orange, it's all, and but we do it in a slightly different way. And that's just an example of how we interpret my ethos into the food. So the flavour pairing, is there anything that you would show young chefs coming in in terms of flavour matching like duck and orange? Um, yeah, I is think, there a, like any tool that you give them to be able to start developing their palate? One thing that I would say to them is get get the Flavour Thesaurus book. If you're not sure and you, you, your tutor or whatever has actually put a dish together, that you can get that book. It's it's not an expensive book, it's less than a tenner. Um, it's, it's worth having just one in the kitchen anyway, because if as a chef, I look through, I want some inspiration, right? I'm going to open Sapping's cookbook. I'm going to look at Daniel Clifford. I've got a set go-to of books that I like to yeah. look at for flavour profiles and things like that. And then that book, if you're not sure, if, if I said to you, what would you put with Mallard? You'd go, not sure. But if you said, what would you put with Blackberry? And then you can go into that book and, and flick through and look at different Anything things. Anything gamey. You, yeah, you, <laughs> yeah. You, you can find out when yeah. it's seasonal, you know, eat f the website um, Eat the Seasons, really useful again, speak to your veg supplier, go and look in the shops, go to the market because they'll buy what's in season and at the right price because that's when there's the most of it. So yeah. there's, there's, there's ways to teach kids how to look for we we will, we will give you all these in the notes as well when we send through the notes as a follow up email. Um, the links to, you know, the Simon Money One Master Chef and also um, a, a recipe that, he's get, that he also um, produced on YouTube. So we'll send you the link to that one. But, you know, it's just great, great to talk through, you know, from a chef's point of view. You know, I hope you're getting a great um, impression of how exciting it is to experiment with flavours, how to, you know, just be inspired by the whole entire industry and the fantastic ingredients we've got around us, the seasonality, you know, we're very lucky in the UK to have so many fantastic producers. And I, I think better? it's important that like for students watching this as well, I've just talked about something that, that's actually quite technical. They don't need to look at that and think, God, I can't do that. I'm never <laughs> going to be able to do that. You know, yeah. Cla classic flavours, make a cheese and beetroot sandwich. Yeah, it, it's, it's a classic flavour. Put, yeah. put some horseradish on, on a piece of salmon and things like that. And there's they can start at the smaller end of the scale and build the way up to, yeah. to the bigger dishes and the more advanced things that I've just been talking about. I don't think they should just listen to me talking about that and think that, that it's pointless because yeah. it's not. Start start small with, with basic things. But the the flavour theosaurus, yeah. you know, we'll put details of how to get all of that down in the notes as well. Um, so what do you think is a common mistake that lets chefs down? Uh, one too many ingredients, know when to stop. Yeah. Um, if it's not on there for a reason, don't put it on. No, don't just freestyle. Yeah, you know. um, I don't think like coming from like where, where, where we're cooking at the minute, mm. like not every, if you're doing an a la carte menu or a theatre menu or whatever you want to call it, it's, it's quite different. But if you're doing like a, a tasting menu, I don't think you need that balance. You have to balance out the entire menu, you do. not the one dish. So they shouldn't fall into the trap of like you've got to have a potato, you've got to have some green veg, you've got to have a bit of protein, you've got to have a puree, you've got to have a sauce, then you've got to have a micro herb. <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah. Just have like a nice sauce, great bit of protein and a, a well presented set of, or array of vegetables, however that, that may be. Yeah. And they don't always have, the vegetables don't have to be cooked. You can compress them in a vat pack machine, you yeah. can blowtorch them, you can pickle them. You know, it, it's all these fun toys the chefs have got, blowtorch, dehydration. Yeah, but it's that easy. It's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's so easy, to, it's so easy to do to make a powder out of mushrooms or mm. whatever it is. And, you know, it's important little things where cookery is a little bit more 
yes, learn the classics, but learn that you don't need to put all the classics on one plate. Exactly, yeah. Brilliant. So um, which of your dishes are you most proud of? Um, I've got one dish in particular. I, I have to be honest, it, it's not made the new menu, but it's one that sits quite popular with me. Um, it's in it's in my book and it's the dessert I cooked in the MasterChef final. It's really easy. Again, I got my inspiration from my nan. She loved tutti fruity ice cream, which literally means all the fruits. Um, I love citrus, so I did citrus tutti fruity. I made a posset with passion fruit, lemon, grapefruit, pink grapefruit, lime, uh, and we made a, a citrus tutti fruity posset. Now, that's fine. It was it was great at the time. Truth be told, I made that in the final of MasterChef because I knew if I was in trouble, I could get that posset in the fridge in five minutes. Yeah. yeah. Dead honest. <laughs> First five minutes of my MasterChef final, we yeah. spent boiling cream sugar and citrus in a pan. Yeah. And then I got that into the fridge in a bowl. Worst case scenario, mm. there's something on a plate. I had two hours, 55 minutes to focus on everything else. So yeah. it's a tactical move, albeit inspired by my nan. Clever. Um, yeah. That then, um, we got talking to different people. We've had it as a lollipop. We've made it into a cocktail, et cetera, et cetera. And I got talking with the guys at Didsbury Gin who won uh, Dragon's Den with the, uh, one, is that the right thing? Uh, they were on Dragon's Den and yep. got like taken on by Jenny Campbell. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they, they, we made that into a liqueur that was then sold in, in every Aldi in the UK. Um, it's soon going to be a gin in a tin for when we've got festivals back. Some and massive like that. So, for that with picnics and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so, I mean, to be honest, it, Food can open so many avenues in, in different ways that you just don't expect. Mm. Um, from a basic, what can I do not to be in terrible trouble in, in the final, get something in a bowl decision, yeah. five minute decision. I've gone to a, a nationwide product that sells mm. throughout the UK. Brilliant. Essentially, it's, it's that, that journey is like that, it's massive. Brilliant. No, another another great another great um, inspiration as well. Um, so, how do you come up with new dishes? Um, again, it's that passion. You've got you've got to want it. Um, you've got to. My mantra is get better. Yeah. I, I I've had this menu on four days. I've got a book under the pass downstairs, and I'll be in service. And if it's not overly busy, or we're talking, looking at what we're prepping during the day. We've got an Argentinian red prawn at the minute with some uh, fermented gooseberry, yuzu gel, sashimi powder, and uh, a satay peanut sauce. Now, I'm going through 180 of these prawns, maybe up to 250 a week. Mm. I've got all the heads. What we're going to do with them? I'm not just throwing them in the bin. No. I'm going to make a prawn head broth that goes out as a snack with a prawn cracker oh, and a, a shellfish oil on the top that people can just have a nice warming little like Shop drink in the bar. Yeah. It's, you know, but that's how that's how dishes evolve. I'm looking at my menu and thinking I've got all them heads there. I can make something out of them. What yeah. I'm going to do? Everyone knows if you eat prawns and like take all, all the juice out of the heads, it's going to be good. Yeah, it tastes nice. No, you know, flavorsome. that's one example of our new dish is born. And then there's other things as well. Um, it sounds really, really crazy. We had um, a pork belly dish on and we made, used to make a crackling crumb. So we'd, we'd make the crackling, but then, you know, you get that fat bit underneath. Yeah. We, we used to scrape all that off because otherwise it spoils quickly. If you just take the really dry stuff. Yeah. But all that soft pork fat, Yes. Salty. Yeah. It tastes really nice. And if you mix that through a savory biscuit, I'm pretty sure somehow I can make a pork fat cheesecake. Yeah. <laughs> but it tastes like a pork scratching. It'll look yeah. like a dessert. And it's yeah. not just being silly for the sake of it. I think we could actually make something out of it. We mm. could get sage in there. We could get apple in there. Mm. You know, and it's all the classic flavours, but I've got wasted product there that literally we scrape it off and throw it in the bin because we've got nothing for it at the minute. But it's, it's all why, about minimising yeah. waste. Why, you know? why, why would I not say if I can make something that's up to the standard yeah. out of something I'm throwing away? Yeah. It's not a, it's not my, my sole aim with every dish, yeah. but I will do it. Brilliant. That's really, really great. So um, name three chefs you admire personally. Um, chefs I admire. Um, mm. I'm a big fan of Marco Pierre White uh, in his heyday, like the white heat days. Um, Gordon Ramsay, I really like. And then you know, there's, there's, there's plenty of others that you know, Marcus Waring, I've, I've been there. You've got to look at all the, that Rene Redzep here, Daniel Hum, places like that. There's, there's so many inspiring chefs well, to look at. We've got more than three here, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Listen, you can look at, like, you know, Brett at the Ledbury, sadly, mm. that's closed. You know, you've got Sat, um, you know, there's, there's so many Simon Rogan. Yeah. You, you can 
just go on and on and on. So there are far more than three, yeah. basically. You can't really sort of stop at that. No. <laughs> I think I think Marco Pierre White was one of the best interviews I've ever done. We spoke about caricatures, yeah. his collection of. Yeah. And uh, he had all this memorabilia from all like peers and stuff. Yeah. yeah that was it. It's uh, it's funny if you watch. Um, on, it's a good one for the, the students to watch, actually, depending on their age. But mm. um, the boiling point on YouTube with Gordon Ramsay, and when you see Gordon Ramsay go back to Marco Pierre White yeah. and the fishing in the river, yeah, um, it's just like everyone will. It's, like, it's Gordon Ramsay, blah, blah blah blah. But then you actually watch him go back to Marco, and he's very, it's very different. It's 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 nice to see. It's just for me, I think it's great. I really enjoyed it. But they're great characters, yeah. aren't they? All of them. So, you know, obviously you said one of your favourite cookbooks is Mark Pierre White's book, White Heat. Yeah. Um, and you also like Eleven Madison Park. Yeah, yeah. Why is uh, that? That's the first time I ever looked at a book and thought, I don't understand it. I can't do it. I can mm. I could never be that good. Um even just the imagery. Mm. It's great to look at. It's it's a like I say, it's a coffee table cookbook. It's very inspiring. It's it's not a cheap cookbook by any stretch of the imagination, um, but it's worth the investment. I've got so much enthusiasm and positive energy, like from reading that book, thinking, imagine if we could take just one element off that dish yeah. and put it onto onto this dish and make it our own, and it lifts everything yeah. that, that you that you've got. You, you can just you can get. I'm not. I'm not saying you take that element and that's mine now. I'm having it. You've got to take something and put your own style on it, your own flavors mm. and, and things like that. And you know, there's, there's so much inspiration in it that aesthetically the dishes look sensational. Brilliant. No. So um, your book, you, you've mentioned your book. What, what did we call it again? Your book. It's at home with Simon Wood. At Fine dining made simple. At home with Simon Wood, fine dining made simple. Only little hints at some of the quiz questions that I'll go through in a minute. That's actually one of the prizes, just to reiterate, that we've got today in our quiz. Um, so, in, in just uh, um, tell us a little bit about um, the recipe that we're going to send the link to. We're doing a Yorkshire pudding yeah. wrap. So, throughout lockdown, I was I, I like to be busy. I like to be I like to be cooking and things like that. And I went through various stages in in lockdown. Uh, McDonald's shut, so I showed everyone how to make Big Mac sauce. <laughs> KFC shut, I showed everyone how to make hot, with hot wings and KFC gravy. Ooh. And it progressed from there. We went into quick meals for the NHS, getting in after work with three ingredients to nut butter cookies, three ingredients for people that wanted to train but weren't going to the supermarket to buy protein and energy bars and things like that. And then eventually I got asked to do you just do as a massive Yorkshire pudding and fill it with something really nice. <laughs> so I made I made a Yorkshire pudding wrap. Um, and you know it, it's it's again this shows hospitality how, how it can grow we, we've got the wrap it's a massive Yorkshire pudding when you pull that out of the oven and it's the size of your head you can't help but put a big smile on your face and um, shortly comfort after food, yeah it? it's great yeah. it's comfort it's relaxing it's simple for students to do the, the method that I use is dead easy you know fill that with milk fill that with egg fill that with flour flour first so it doesn't stick and then so with, cups of yeah, rather than quantities in grams. I, I find that the easiest way to teach yeah. anyone. If anyone's unsure about how to make the ox pudding, that's the way to do it. Yeah. In my opinion, that's yeah. I taught my little girl to do it. She, she she's eleven. She's fine with it. You know. Um, but it's funny how um, hospitality and, and cooking can take you in different directions because just from that one video, yeah, I ended up being on the bill at Download Festival, virtual like festival, and I was bookended by Alter Bridge and then Kiss with me cooking in the middle. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, I was the warmer pack for Gene Simmons, which I'm, I'm a big rock fan. So for me, that, that was great. Like, it was fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah, no, so it, it's fantastic to sort of talk to you. I hope you've seen from Simon's passion, his enthusiasm for the industry, just how fantastic a career in the hospitality industry can be. You know, how fantastic food is to work with, you know, new menu inspiration. The sky is the absolute limit, you know, and so- There the, are no limits. There are no limits, no. Exactly. So we're, we're probably in the stratosphere somewhere. But um, I'm just going to ask you some quiz questions now. Four quiz questions, which will all, which will be sent to you to reiterate, along with the relevant links to Simon's video of the Yorkshire pudding wrap, um, and also his uh, video of him winning Master Chef. So there's clues in both of those. So the first question is: In which year did Simon win Master Chef? 
The second question is, how many years ago did Simon open Woods Restaurant in Manchester? Now, when you watch the Yorkshire Pudding wrap video, you need to mention three ingredients. Now, Simon's just given the game away on those, really, you know, but uh, name three ingredients from his uh, film of the Yorkshire Pudding wrap. And finally, we have said this a few times, what is the name of Simon's book? I just want to say a massive thank you, Simon, for having us here today. Thank you for being the patron of the Chesterham Academy um, at the Manchester College. I'm now going to um, hand over to our chef lecturer, it's um, Alex Possumay, and he's going to tell you a little bit about great things uh, to, to expect on embarking on a course at the Manchester College. Thanks very much for that. That was a uh, fantastic, really, really, really impressive. Um, it's great to kind of like speak to some chefs that are in industry and uh, listen to your journey and see where you started and and how that all that that, that process has gone. And yeah, there there are no limits, and uh, it's it's a it's a fantastic journey that you've been on. And hopefully, we'll get some students there one day as well. So big inspiration. Thank you very very much. Thanks very much. OK, good morning. Uh, my name is Alessandro Possumai. Um, I'm one of the chef lecturers at the Manchester College. Um, I've been with the Manchester College for, for just over a year now. So um, I've got a little bit of a PowerPoint that I'm just going to share with you now. Um, and I'm just going to talk through the, the different um, the different kind of avenues that we that we look at and um, starting points and things like that. Um, so. Hopefully you can see my, my screen there. Catherine, can you just give me a thumbs up if you can see my uh, my PowerPoint? Yeah, great. OK, fantastic. Um, so this year I've been teaching mainly the, the level one award and certificate in culinary skills, and that's a really good starting point for all our students. Um, so depending on what um, what GCSE results you get, we've got a few different starting points. I'll talk about that a bit a bit later on. Um, so a little bit about my background. So my name is Alessandro Possumai and, I, uh, you know, I've got, with, that, with that funny name, you can tell that I'm, you know, I, I'm, a, um, I'm an Italian, an Italian chap. So um, I grew up in, you know, going to Italy every year, visiting my grandparents and I was surrounded by food and produce all the time. So that kind of really kickstarted my passion for for catering and, and, and the food business. Um, as, as I grew up, I, you know, started part-time jobs and initially worked at Heathcote's in Preston while I was at school and uh, really, really enjoyed my time there and kind of met a few fantastic chefs and kind of like just kept my eye from the sidelines into everything that was happening. I was, I was really quite young when I was working there. And then um, I, I started at Runshaw College in Leyland, which was a fantastic experience. Prior to that, you know, when I was at school, nothing had kind of like really worked for me. I, I'm, I'm not very an academic learner. I'm more of a hands on kinesthetic learner. So as soon as I got to catering college and I was able to kind of really kind of hone that passion, it was fantastic. Um, so really kind of like flourished, if you will, at catering college and was a fantastic experience. Um, after I left catering college, got a job working with Mark Birchall, who now owns uh, Moore Hall, uh, working at Highton Manor. So that was quite a while ago. And then I spent some time working in a, a ski season in, uh, in, in Val d'Isere in the French Alps, which is a fantastic experience. I got to go uh, snowboarding every day whilst also uh, cooking some fantastic food in the evenings for all our guests in the hotel. Brilliant, brilliant experience working a season. Uh, after that, I came back to England and um, worked in the Lake District for a while and also worked in a, a few restaurants in Lancashire before setting up my own business. Um, so I, I opened Winkley's Sandwich and Coffee Bar um, I, and I owned that for about 12 years. So it was a sandwich bar in Delhi, but we also had a, a big outside catering company on the side where we did catering for lots of weddings and events and things like that. And it was a fantastic experience, really, really interesting. Um, not the usual route of opening up a restaurant, but, uh, but really, really fantastic to be on the front line, you know, having live briefs all the time, you know, especially with the outside catering, you might be, you know, catering for um, 
a wedding one week and then the next week you might be doing a christening, but really, really big numbers. Uh, we also did some catering, corporate catering for um, a lot of the businesses in and around Preston. Um, really, really fantastic experience. Uh, during that time, I found a passion for working with, uh, with, with young students because we took a lot, of, a lot of young students on work experience um, from local colleges. And I found a real passion for working with those young people. And uh, I spent some time in college mentoring and teaching barista lessons to uh, to all the students there. And uh, I had a really fantastic relationship with my lecturers that, that, that taught me. Um, so then I, I looked into training to be a, a lecturer and spent a year um, working as a, at Runshaw College again, training to be a, a lecturer and did some fantastic teaching hours. And then um, I managed to secure a, a role at the Manchester College, which has been absolutely fantastic. My first role uh, as, a, as a lecturer, and it's been brilliant. I've got a fantastic team behind me and uh, I've not looked back since. So really, really, uh, really exciting, you know. Um, as far as the, the level one award and the certificate goes, so this is what I've been teaching this year. Um, and you can see that there's a photograph of a, a bunch of my students that I've been working with. Um, we split the, the, the first year into two qualifications. So we've got the level one award, which runs from September to December. And then we've got the certificate, which runs from January to July. So what we work on at the beginning is the real foundations of cookery. So we really kind of get down to the nitty gritty of cooking methods and methods of cookery and what foods suit those methods of cookery. So from September to December, we look at boiling, poaching and steaming. So there's some of the, the basic skills that you need to use to, to scaffold your catering career. And then we move on to stewing and braising, baking, roasting and grilling and deep deep and shallow frying. So some really fantastic methods of cookery as well there. And we do we run assessments on each of those elements. So we don't do a sit down test at the end of the year. What we do as the year goes on, we'll practice something that we're, we're boiling for a few weeks and then we'll do an assessment on it. And then we'll practice poaching for a few weeks and then we'll do an assessment on it. So a continuous assessment, which takes the pressure off the student. You know, we're really, really relaxed. I like to be chilled out in the kitchen as much as possible. I find that kitchens can become very stressful, so we try and keep it as cool as possible. Uh, we try and take the stress away. And we, you know, we like to have fun as well while we're doing it. And the other thing that we run alongside that is, if you can just see at the bottom there, the RWE. And what that means is real working environment. We have a fantastic restaurant at the Manchester College that we uh, that we run and it's open to uh, the public to come and eat with us. Uh, and we run that currently on a Wednesday and Thursday lunch, but we, we, we might change that next year. Um, so it's a fantastic opportunity, whether you're doing a front of house award, a qualification, or whether you're doing a kitchen qualification, um, to work together as a team. You'll come into the kitchen and I'll introduce you to the menu and all different aspects of the kitchen. And then for um, two weeks, you'll be working either on the starters or the main course, and you'll rotate around the kitchen. So you might be working on making soups one day, and then that'll tie into the boiling side of things. So everything that you've been learning in your class about boiling, we'll then put that on the menu to um, to support you and you can see how then that gets served to the customers. So we, we work on some really nice soups, some char grilled um, you know kebab dishes. And we also have you know things like deep fried fish and chips where we make we're you know preparing the fish and making the batter and making everything from scratch. And it's a fantastic opportunity. Um, we also make fresh bread every single day as well when we've got the restaurant running. Um, obviously we've not got a lot of time to make bread. Um, because we've only got a short window. If the students if you get in for nine o'clock and we've got customers coming in at quarters of 12 and usually making bread is quite a lengthy uh, lengthy process. So to speed that up, we make uh, we make a, use of, uh, a method of bread making called Chorley Wood. Now Chorley Wood's a fantastic uh, method of making bread because we put um, some vitamin C tablet in there. And what that does is it speeds up the fermentation process and the proving process. And um, it means that you can cut about an hour's time off the bread making process, but still gives you fantastic bread. So we make freshly baked breads um, and for catcher, and we, you know, we stuff it with herbs and all sorts of things. So um, we've got a real good mix of, of uh, experiences in those RWE sessions that ties into the um, to, to the core qualification. We also have um, a little cafe as well called the Grab and Go, um, and students are expected to, as part of their qualification, to go into the Grab and Go and, and work with one of our uh, team members called Sarah. 
and um, we're actually creating dishes to serve to um, other students in and around the college as well. So we'll get a really good experience of all different types of the industry, as well as um, we get some outside briefs as well. So we might do outside catering jobs for the management or the or people like that um, at the college. Um, so as far as practical versus theory is concerned, um, we run um, a practical skills class, which is three hours long, and we have the RWE, which is five hours long as well. And then to support that, we have a one hour theory of catering, a one hour tutorial and a one hour employability. So in the theory of catering, we explore um, the theory behind all the um, all the cookery methods that we've talked about earlier. Um, so you get a real deep understanding, which kind of like gives you underpinning knowledge. Uh, tutorial, we have um, uh, a specific kind of um, workload that we look at on that. We, we might look at common issues in the catering industry or um, at the minute, you know, one of the one of the topics that we'll be exploring this year is the Black Lives Matter movement and how that is going to affect the catering industry. So we tie we try and tie topical things back to back to the industry and how that's going to um, affect your employment in the future. And then employability, we spend some time working on building CVs, talking about what jobs are available for you when you move on and progress from college into industry. And we really try and kind of scaffold, um, you know, the complete experience to make sure that when you're ready for work, you've got a fantastic uh, a foot to get up onto the ladder to start working. Um, if you've not done too well at uh, um, GCSE with your maths and English as well, we also um, provide functional skills or GCSE um, to work alongside that. Um, so in the catering course, you're in two days a week. So the rest of the time, you've got some time for self-study. You've also got time to work part time, which we really, really encourage because that supports your education while you're with us. And you've also got time to chill out and play on your Xbox as well, which we also kind of like a bit of as well. Um, so once you've finished your functional skills or GCSE, you can hopefully if you get those finished by Christmas, you'll get an extra day to work in industry and do some part time work as well. So, we're, so it's not not too pressure. It's not too kind of not too much pressure on you. You get plenty of time to um, to work with us in the kitchens, but you also got plenty of time to work in industry and, uh, and have plenty of time to chill out as well. Um, so progression routes you can see on the left hand side on the on the green slide. Um, if you've done if you've got um, grades one to three at GCSE we'll start you on the level one award and then move you on to the certificate um, which is an introduction to culinary skills. If you've got grades three to four at GCSEs, we'll start you on the level two certificate and diploma in culinary skills. So that's just that next step up. So it's um, a little bit more complex. Um, we, we focus a lot more on weights and measures. So you need to have a good understanding of, uh, of maths and English um, to be able to, to, put, to build recipes and things like that. And then if you've got a grade four at GCSE or above, we set you off on the um, level two technical certificate uh, in professional cookery, which is our most technical starting point. Um, this also includes uh, a 3.5 hour exam at the end, uh, a written exam, and we've got a practical exam as well. So the pressure's really on with that one. But if you know, if you if you found that um, you've got a grade four at GCSE, you'll be absolutely fine with that. Um, progression routes. So the level one students move up to the level two. And the level two students are able to move up to the level three in either a diploma in advanced professional cookery or again a technical certificate or a diploma in prof for professional chefs. We are looking at providing a level four um, in the future and um, hopefully this year it's coming in but again with that we, we expect a certain amount of um, work experience and um, you, you're expected to be over the age of 23 to 24 uh, and have a really good grasp of maths and English as well. Um, it's also expected that you know you've got some really good experience in a rosette or Michelin star standard establishment. Um, we run some other courses as well. So if you find that halfway through um, your time with us at the Manchester College, you found a real passion for patisserie, you know we run um, level two and three general patisserie and confectionery, um, and they're really really fantastic foundations if you want to open your own business as a little bakery or move on to be a pastry chef in industry um, so they're, they're, they give you some really really good experience and we also run technical certificates and diplomas in artisan bread and pastry as well um, with mark who who you'll meet a little bit later and that's a that's a fantastic uh, qualification to get under your belt and it really really does open the world the world to you if you've been watching any of the the uh, um, Great British Bake Off, the professionals. That's some of the stuff that you'd be doing with Mark. And we've got our own fantastic patissier in Mark. He's a, he's a brilliant lecturer. 
Um, so we've also got some fantastic um, social networking and social media sites that we've set up so you can keep an eye on everything that we're up to. Uh, we've got two um, Instagram pages. So the two that you can see in the middle, we've got TMC Bistro East and TMC Hospitality and Catering. So the TMC Bistro East, I tend to run that one with my level one students. So that's all the food that we've been creating this year. Um, so you can see the sort of things that you will be preparing if you come on board with us. And the TMC Hospitality and Catering, that's a more broad um, departmental um, Instagram and that'll give you an insight to everything that's covered. Um, the, the two Facebook pages, so we've got Man uh, Hospitality and Catering Manchester. Again, that's a general departmental one. So that really kind of gives us an insight into, um, you know, what's going on in the department, any events that we are doing and any, um, you know, any big outside catering jobs that we might be um, providing for you know any anyone in the college in or outside the college and then over the other side we've got tmc l1 culinary skills so that's a that's a, a facebook page that i've set up for my level one learners i share lots of fantastic industry videos there with my students and uh, it's really good for kind of me finding content on the internet um you know short videos from you know people like simon ward or gordon ramsay or marco pio white so it really kind of can you might pick up little bits of knowledge and we also share anything that we've been cooking there as well um okay so that's that's kind of like level one course and level one qualification that i've been teaching um i'm going to hand you over to one of our fantastic uh, restaurant um lecturers in a minute andrew but before i go i'm just going to ask you a quick question for the competition so Chorley Wood Method sees the addition of which daily vitamin that you might find at home to speed up the proving time for making bread in the restaurant. So that's Chorley Wood sees the addition of which daily vitamin to speed up the fermentation or the proving time when we make bread in the restaurant. All right, uh, that'll be available on the, on the chat and uh, it'll get emailed out to you as well if you can't remember that. Um, but thanks very much. My name is Alessandro Posma. I'm going to hand you over to uh, to Andrew now. He's our restaurant uh, lecturer and uh, he'll tell you a bit about that qualification. So thanks very much, Andrew. Andrew, you're just on mute. Okay. okay. Thanks, Alex. I'm the uh, lucky one. I'm down here at uh, Woods Restaurants. So I've been sat listening to Simon with uh, Catherine, um, listening to her tales, the, his, uh, the story he's been through, the journey, and it's been uh, an insight. Had a quick mooch around the restaurant, see how things are working uh, for front of house, because that's my little specialist area. And it's uh, been uh, very interesting. Just it's, it's also nice to touch base with um, the industry, which we always say we need to do. Um, you know, as students, you go and do work placements. We also as tutors like to do work placements as well. You know, um, it keeps us in touch with what's happening in the real world and it, it upskills us as well. We, we learn new techniques and new new technologies. Right, a little bit about myself. Well, my name's Andrew Foster. Um, I am the longest serving member of staff within the department. Um, started many, many years ago. Um, but like most of you, um, I went to college. But before I went to college, I actually, I was, I can't say twisted. My arm was twisted by my parents. You're not sitting at home during the summer doing nothing. It was, you go out, get a job, um, earn, start earning some money. You know, and uh, it's your money. It's going to help with your tra travel and transport costs. So I actually started out working uh, in a um, a rugby club, glass collecting, age sixteen, and it was uh, an interesting. It gave me an insight as to what what front of house could be like. Not the best, but it gave me an idea of what 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 things were were happening. Went to college, went to Salford University, and got my uh, hospitality. Um, qualifications. Uh, whilst at college, I changed my job, got a part-time job in a hotel restaurant um, in Bolton. And that was for me from Salford to Bolton. That was two bus journeys and then a nice walk up a long hill just to get there. And I enjoyed it. It was getting me out. It was giving me experience. I actually went 
originally as a, as a chef. I wanted to be a chef. And then the, the guy who owned it said, no, I think we'll take you out of the kitchen and we'll put you in front of the house. And uh, it snowballed from there. I really enjoyed it. I changed my direction after contact for, from an old tutor, moved into, into the education, moved to the college, gained my qualifications for teaching and never really sort of uh, changed and looked back, but still love working in the industry. It's, it's a great industry to be in. OK. Um, whilst you're at college, if you do in front of house, we're going to teach you um, the different methods of serving food and drink. You know, it's not just one, you know, um, I have a very old friend who said uh, you're a plate carrier. No, you're more than a plate carrier. You are the person who can either make or break that a good, successful restaurant. Um, how the food gets from the kitchen to the customer is dependent upon what the business is looking at. Andrew, okay. sorry to yes. interrupt you. Have you got your presentation? I have, and I'm just going to put it on any minute now. Lovely. Let me just get rid of that. Oh, I've just asked it to play. Wrong one, that one. Sorry. It's OK, no problem. Where is that one? I'm just going to share my... Uh, So, are we okay now? Um, methods of serving food and drink change. Things change over the years. We've moved away from silver service. It's now table service, what we class as table service, which is more plated. We do. Whilst Andrew, we're sorry to interrupt you again. Is this the is this the right the right one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, things have changed, so table service and counter service and takeaway. We will be doing some of this during us during your year in the college, right? Uh, you will have practical assessments and different skills and theory um, for all the different styles. It forms the basis of most um, industry most industry practices. Trends today: table service. It's um, the style we used to have back in the 1990s, something called uh, Nouvelle Cuisine. And that's led into plated service and it became uh, the standard, right? It actually gave control of the service of the food and the presentation of the food to the chef. And that became key. We still teach silver service. Right, so we you will be doing some silver service because it's the person skills that uh, we're interested in from there. You need to speak to be, be able to speak to the customers. You need to be able to interact with the customers and show your professional trends. Drinks. Yes, you'll be serving food and drink these days at the moment. Craft beers, locally brewed craft beers are very popular. Cocktails. We'll be making cocktails that um, wines and spirits. As you progress to level two, you'll be serving wines and spirits um, and learning the differences between you know, sweet, medium, dry, different colours, different flavours, different parts of the world that uh, wines come from. OK, teas and coffees. Yes, you'll be doing those from the, from the word go. Um, coffees, we've got a, an Italian espresso machine and we teach you how to use that. Demand for baristas which is a specialist for making the, those coffees, um, is, is very high. And so high, you know, they do get poached from business to business. And there are even competitions within the industry for baristas. 
you know, uh, the Olympics of the barista is uh, you go on YouTube and you find lots and lots of videos of uh, coffee art, as they call it. Right. Also trending today, we've got afternoon tea, which combines a lot of the skills that everybody's required these days. It's a more relaxed service. It's easier to keep, easy to eat finger food. We can offer champagne, we can offer cocktails, we can offer teas and coffees to keep it traditional. It's entirely up to the business. It's um, just what the business wants or what the customer needs. That's what we're trying to make in front of house. I'm not going to play that. OK, when we begin to get to the level two, we begin to look at what kind of specialist area would you as a student like to progress into? It's not just that serving of food. You've got to have the skills and the knowledge about the menu. You've got to have skills and knowledge about the um, ingredients, you know, food safety. You've got to have excellent customer care skills. The menu and the dish ingredients, you know, I've just mentioned there about the uh, allergens, but also how that food has been cooked and prepared. You should be able to discuss with the customer when they walk through. You now, this dish has been prepared in a certain way and it's got these ingredients and it tastes like this and it's one of my favourites. You will need to know how to produce different drinks, your hot and your cold teas, how to present them to the customer. Knowledge of different types of alcohol I've mentioned. Non-alcoholic drinks these days. During our lockdown, uh, the college has been asking, asking me for, we've got recipes for some non-alcoholic cocktails, mocktails as we call them, okay? Um, all relevant legislation, we're very driven by that. So we've got food safety, and also we've got legislation to do with uh, serving alcohol to people who we can and cannot serve and we're now going to have to take into account all the COVID legislation that uh, will have a big effect. Each of those has got a specialist area. I haven't really mentioned sommelier, being a sommelier or being um, the, the specialist in the wine industry. All right? uh, there are four levels basically within, the, within that. Uh, you start with a level one as a wine, progress to level two, Level three is uh, an intermediate level and you then progress on to a diploma. And then the next step after a diploma in wine studies is what's called a, a Master of Wine. And it can take up to five years to become a Master of Wine. I should say it's that special that there's only approximately 300 people across the world who are sommeliers. So it becomes that special and that specialised in, in their knowledge. So there's plenty of opportunities. If you don't want to uh, progress, that's great. There are lots and lots of jobs just being a waiter or waitress, um, baristas, they can progress. But I say to people, those people who, who work front of house actually have got a quicker route into hospitality management than maybe those who are working in the, in, in the kitchen. All right. The skills, also move into, strangely enough, uh, television. If anybody can name the most famous waiter in, in the country at the moment, I'm hoping they would give me one name and that would be Fred Syriax. And as students, you might have seen Fred Syriax without realising that his background is, is food service. He was the general manager of a, of a restaurant in London called Galvin's, uh, Windows at Galvin's, big hotel, big restaurant there. and. He's progressed now, he's actually left his hospitality job. He now moved, does more work in television. Uh, and you'll have seen him as um, the host of a dating show. And I'm sure you know which one I mean. Um, and he's done the hotel version of that as well. And he's called, his background is, is just food service. And he does, um, Travels the world as well with uh, Fred, Gino and Gordon on uh, ITV. You'll see see there and you'll see the tricks that they get up to. And the, but they still do cookery and uh, look for the specialists. He's very, very good at what he does. OK, whilst in the industry, you will have to do, uh, sorry, whilst in college, you will have to do a, a placement, especially at level uh, two, all right? Um, with, when you're at level ones, 
you've got your placements that will be happening within the college. We do lots and lots of functions, lots of events. We do sh functions for the chef's forum. Um, you'd be expecting to work on lunchtime and evening restaurants as well, just to get you into the flavour of how the different presentation and how the atmosphere changes from a busy lunchtime to an evening session. There'll be work placements at level two around the uh, various establishments uh, in the city centre and also outside the uh, city centre, just the local areas. And then we'll also organise and we'll go on trips and visits just to see how the industry works, what's different about different restaurants and different presentations. And of course, I must mention that will be subject to what the government say we can do and also what the college says we can do at the moment. So this next coming year is going to be a little interesting. There'll be things uh, taking place. OK, now I've got one last question and it's to do with um, Fred Syriax. OK, um, really, is it, he has a very strange hobby. And I would like you to find out what is Fred Syriax's hobby? And it's nothing to do with food. It might surprise you. It's more to do with a sport. And I'll leave it at that. Um, the next person you're going to hear from, I believe, is going to be Mark. And Mark is our master patissier. He's um, based at our field and campus, and he's a smashing bloke. Couldn't ask for a better a better friend. And uh, the pastries. Oh, I wish he supplied me pastries every day. He just works on a different campus, so I don't get to see them. So I'm going to say, Mark, over to you. Mark, sorry, sorry. What a simple what a mistake. mistake. Technology. Technology. Right. Well, thanks a lot, Andrew. That was a great introduction. Uh, as well as uh, everybody else who's taken part so far. Oh yes, uh, you saw me earlier. I'm Mark Cooper. I'm the specialist uh, in running all the uh, patisseries at uh, the Manchester College and we uh, we deliver our course over our new Industry Excellence Academy uh, on at the Fieldon campus. Um, my background, I'll introduce a little bit about myself because really it's not about myself it's about you as the students who are going to be coming into college to do your course of choice so a little bit about my background yes there I am wonderful photo um, you'll see the German flags on my applets that's because I was able to uh, gain my master patissiers over in Germany whilst working in Germany which I had to study for yes as well in German and put through the ropes but um, achieved it you see a little bit of a background there from myself, uh, fully qualified uh, baker, patissier, uh, gained all my qualifications uh, up in Blackpool, and then I moved on abroad. And uh, yes, about 1989 to around about 2004, I have travelled the globe, whether that's going to be, in, that's whether that's been on the QE2 cruise liner or to some of the finest five star hotels around the world. Switzerland, Germany, Malaysia, just to name just a few. Um, yes, uh, gained, as I said, master patisserie uh, qualification. Then I went on the journey, which took me around as executive pastry chef to some fine places. Uh, the industry, it, yes, you will work in the industry, but like I've said to students who have gone on and to traveled, yeah, I tried it as a winter season in St. Moritz and I got the travel bug with the industry and the industry has helped me to gain confidence, uh, to be highly skilled and allowed me to travel. And it's not just all about work, work, work. I was able to play as well, skiing, rock climbing, just a little bit about myself. Uh, I then came home, I uh, had my own business for a few years, and then I went into new product development because yes, working and studying at college, uh, doing your industry placement, uh, gaining all this knowledge, again, it leads you to different paths. It is not just these days restaurants or hotels. You can go into new product development. You can be a classic trained artisan baker. You can go on into make uh, having your own business, uh, nutrition. You can go into higher education. So there's lots there for you to achieve. Um, then afterwards, when I settled more down in uh, Manchester, 
Um, I began my journey as teaching and now I've been a teaching eight years in total. Um, now here at the Manchester College, uh, I've got about three and a half years. In those three and a half years, yeah, great. We've uh, had some great students pass by, got some fantastic colleagues who you will have as tutors. Uh, we have been the number one college uh, in Manchester, uh, as well as being the highest achieving patisserie course over the last two years with the awarding body, the VTCT. So you will be coming into a, uh, an environment which you'll learn loads of, lots of different skills. So again, it's not just about myself, it's the industry. What's the industry? The industry, yeah, it's, uh, it, it helps you with creativity. It, you can learn so much, you can meet new people, you can learn languages, uh, creativity, it's fantastic. You can really put your yourself to the forefront. And it is within the industry, it is regarded as a specialist area. It's a science. You will learn all this with us within your theory and within your practical lessons. Yeah, new trends these days now are they're being pushed more and more uh, nutty flavors, the more healthier products, i.e. what Simon was saying before, vegan recipes, yeah, um, vegetarian. We always have to have this at the forefront, yeah. Smaller portions, they have to be eye-catching. Again, fits into what Andrew for front of house, afternoon teas, yeah. Showing your creativity, showing your skill level in the products, what you make, yeah. The colours, the variations, the tastes, the different shapes, yeah. It's amazing what you can achieve. So what are you expecting? What are you going to achieve with us at Manchester College? in the realms of the patisserie. What do we cover? Well, each student, yeah, uh, coming into a level two, there are 10 uh, units as such. Uh, again, uh, it's a technical level. You will be expected to uh, do two written exams throughout the year. Not only the written exams, you will have at the end of year practical exam, but in between all that, you will have what we call as kitchen assessments, which are based as exam based. Right, so you will have to do uh, assignment work uh, in the catering and hospitality industry. What is, what's the industry all about? You will get a qualification in food safety and hygiene. Uh, you'll have to know the planning and preparing because that's the forefront of things, what you'll need to know within the industry, as well as uh, calculating costs. You'll need to cost, you'll need to know how much you're making, what, how you cover your costs. You will learn all this at college, as well as all the wonderful fantastic stuff we do in the kitchen. Desserts, hot and cold desserts, yeah, ice creams, yeah, chocolate fondants, yeah, cheesecakes, to learning finishing techniques, presentation skills, uh, patisserie, biscuits, cakes and sponges. What does that entail? Yeah, gattos, torts, you know, make uh, macarons, uh, amazing produce what we'll make and the students have gone on to even stretch themselves further within lockdown in keeping on practicing and practicing and producing products. You'll also learn artisan breads and the bread and uh, ferment dough pro process. You'll also work working with chocolate. Oh, everybody loves working with chocolate. Students this year at level two, they were challenged to work uh, to make your own chocolate showpiece. So I will always stretch you, but I also believe in having a lot of fun on the course because fun is also learning. You're going to make mistakes. We all make mistakes, but it's what we're learning from them. This is how we learn. And uh, you're, you will come in, you'll enjoy your time. You'll be suited with your kitchen equipment, with your kitchen clothing, your uniform, as well as having an outstanding kitchens to work in with plenty of equipment to use um, and a friendly, safe environment. Then where does that lead you on to? Well, yep, it can lead you on to the progression to level three, technical patisserie and confectionery. Level three, technical patisserie and confectionery would again, take you through all the practical elements to a higher level from level two, but as well, it introduces petit fours. You'll have to design and develop a showpiece, uh, many different factors as well as using your um, theory, your theory, your theory units as well. And all students will get the chance to work, gain valuable work experience uh, at the, on the industry placements with uh, a, a very dear colleague who I'll introduce you to later. Um, but yes, uh, you'll be uh, in, the, in industry working with some of the finest um, 
places within Manchester in the Greater Manchester area, uh, which is and the Hilton Hotel is one of our partners, the uh, Stock Exchange again, the Ivy Restaurant. Uh, in fact, one of our students uh, who started in level two, she went on to her work experience uh, at the Ivy and then after a few months they took her on as a part-time work and they've carried that on over where she's working full-time but being released to come to college so that's a typical example of what it could lead to i'm always looking for different places for where you can go into uh, to, to have this industry experience because it is valuable it you need to you need to do it it gives you a great insight to what the industry does uh, past students who we've had at Manchester College have after their level three they've gone on or even whilst doing the level three they've set up home businesses and uh, one such student she set up her own business uh, specializing in vegan products and now she produces for a number of cafes in the South Manchester area so it's always going moving forward and forward also here uh, at the industry of excellence academy uh, from the technical patisserie course we will work together with uh, the chefs forum we'll have chefs in to give you specialist lessons we'll also have luke frost from valrona chocolate from france who will come in they'll have three four days for the week you'll be doing demonstrations we will also be running a mini chocolate competition and whoever wins that would be the possibilities of going over to france to the valrona factory so there's lots going on we also enter competitions will take per, per, take place regionally nationally and internationally uh, we were just we were invited just before lockdown to enter the young bakers international competition over in taiwan but due to uh, covid unfortunately that broke down but we have still been invited <coughs> to take part once covid has passed or it's safe to travel but this will be based then in lyon in france so there's many, many opportunities and it's what you put into your studies is what you'll, you'll get out of it. Um, there's a, quite a bit of theory to do as well as the practical, what we all like to do. Um, going on from there, we again, progression routes, which I've talked to you about. Uh, when, once you hit uh, progression onto level three, after you've done your level three, we are starting um, our 21, 22 our new uh, patisserie culinary arts degree so there's the chance there to progress from the level three up into the degree course and if not into the degree course you can also go on to USEN our possibilities of use higher educational courses uh, hospitality management events management uh, working uh, again out at our field campus where you'll gain all those skills to to gain uh, specific uh, specialist areas to move into into the industry so you'll be well supported in what you can do and what you can achieve uh, again if you feel then you want to go into industry naturally industry could be straight for you and um, i'm always being asked myself from chefs from around manchester greater manchester do we have um, anybody uh, who would be suitable to be going into uh, industry and i can be uh, lucky to say that a majority of the places within Manchester at this given time uh, they will all be past students of myself working in the industry as pastry chefs. Uh, what can this industry offer you? Uh, the industry, uh, endless, yeah. You can adapt, you can move from pastry chef and if you start out pastry chef and you wanted to try something else you can move into uh, the chef side of things. You can go into front of house. Front of house yes it's so exp it's so important yeah it's all about that customer customer satisfaction which we will teach you yeah knowing how to serve how to deliver that product and how it's to be served to a customer and uh, all these skills are vital to pick up for an uh, uh, for a career within the hospitality industry it's massive it can achieve you can achieve a uh, lots of things with the industry as I did, um, yeah, you can travel, it allows you to travel, whether it's regional, national, international, world's your oyster, get to learn new languages, yeah. Being a pastry chef, not taking it away from those salties, as Luke Frost would say, but uh, we believe in all the sweet stuff, being creative and enjoying what we do, 
putting it out there a nice on a plate presentation or is that finest uh, tiger bread what we may call for catcher or yeah that's finest dessert what we want to show to our customers yeah it's all about learning teamwork support and guidance these skills also you'll learn in the college they're all vital skills what you'll learn to develop yourself but you, apart from taking that off on into industry but also for your, your yourself socially yeah we'll give you the training to help you develop your career like i said in hotels restaurants bakeries even into new product development uh, you it's it's fantastic yeah? so what i would like to say now is um a uh, we won't, can't wait to see you till september but another one is two questions one on behalf of maxine and her quiz question would be this product is produce seven is produced 75 times sold every second of the day what product is this all right and my question is what is a parry breast yeah. so i'd like you to think about them and put your answers into us uh, you'll find out uh, at the end of uh, out the presentations how this will go and then it will be then uh, the winners will be told later on on Friday, if not at the beginning of next week, so that for the, to achieve those fantastic prizes. But now I would like to introduce you to uh, a wonderful lady who I've been able to work with over the last couple of years on our industry placements, and she's a joy to work with. Her name is Hilary Hoare. So Hilary, I'd like to you to go ahead and do your thing. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much, very Mark. Much, Mark. Uh, thank you very much to everybody. Um, I don't know about you, but oh, I seem to have lost my screen now. I'm feeling quite hungry. Um, great to watch some of those things. And I work quite closely with uh, the hospitality and catering department. Uh, and I'm forever in Andrew's, Alex and Mark's classroom. And I work as part of the employability team. And I'm called Hilary. Hilary Orr, that's me on that screen there. So let me just talk a little bit about work experience. So Everybody coming to the college, the 16 to 18 year olds, have to engage in work experience. It comes together as, as it, it is as important as your maths and English and as your main qualification. So I'm hoping by the end of this session, I can give you a little bit more uh, information about how it all works. Work experience covers your work placements. That's you going out externally to do a work placement and work related activity. All 16 to 18 year old students, as I said, will complete an external placement and aspects of work related. So I'll talk a little bit more about the differences and industry placements. So Mark was just talking about the industry placements. They tend to be available for level two and level three students. Uh, you'll spend a minimum of 315 hours working with an employer. That equates to about 45 to 50 days throughout the academic year. It tends to be two days a week, but sometimes we can mix and match it and it might look like a block week every now and then. It gives you great industry based experience. It will be a good fit for your course, meaning you'll be able to learn the relevant technical skills for your industry. You'll have several reviews throughout the year where you'll have the occasion for me to pop in to see you with your employer to talk about the things that you, you're enjoying, the things that you might want tweaking. Um, it's a great way to find out how much you're enjoying your placement. And if for whatever reason you're not, then I'll work with you to support you on that and try and find a, a good fit for you. Some employers may pay you a wage. Um, some may offer you expenses. The college will support you to get to get you there and to get you back in your travel or however else you might need some form of financial support. You might need lunches providing when you're there. It's a great the industry support, industry placement, as I say, is a longer placement. Compare that to your standard work placement, which again is available within the department, hospitality and catering. Again, that's available to level two, three, level two and three students. That tends to be two days a week, but that tends to be shorter. That's about 14 days in total compared to the 45 to 50 days on the industry placement. Again, you'll receive feedback on your placement and you'll receive similar support as if you were on the industry placement. Again, from myself, your tutors and from um, other uh, professionals within the college. Um, it gives you a very brief oversight of what it's like to work in that chosen uh, career. 
path that you've, you're looking at. Sometimes it, it might not tick the boxes for you. Sometimes it might give you great passion and you think to yourself, you know what, I might want to try a bit of a longer placement. I might want to look at an industry placement. So it gives you a, a general overview of what it's like. Then we've got work related. Again, all students aged 16 to 19 in the college will engage in some form of work related. And as you've heard the tutors talking about earlier, there's quite a lot of engagement with employers. And obviously we've had Simon Wood on this morning, this afternoon, which has been fantastic. So as a department, they're very much engaging with local partners, employers in and around the Manchester area and beyond. So that could be uh, speakers coming in to do classroom talks like these webinars that we're doing now, hands-on support with your CV, mock interviews, live briefs, site visits, competition entries. There's lots of things which will tick boxes for your work related, but we within the college, my team and the tutors will support you on that. I'm just going to watch a short video now on some students talking about the benefits of work experience. If anyone said work experience was pointless, I definitely disagree because it's good to have anything under your belt, especially in this day and age. To have any experience is very beneficial applying for any job. I think that work experience is a great time to find out what it is you actually want to do in life. Um, at that age, I believe it's easier to jump around and try different job roles to find something that you actually enjoy doing. Work experience is invaluable and it is it's so important to help you get your foot in the door of a working environment. There are many benefits to work experience from learning soft skills like teamwork, dealing with different levels of seniority uh, and managing and organising your time, skills that are crucial in life and not just in the workplace. Very short video hearing from a couple of students talking about the benefits of work experience. Just going to look at them a little bit more detail, really. So what are the benefits? Firstly, you get to learn about the job, not just through your course, but real hands on experience on the job. As you can see, for example, there, the gentleman there is, is serving the, the food. It, it gives you those opportunities that you wouldn't maybe not necessarily get in college. You'll see what happens firsthand. You'll get to work in those busy kitchens and through this, you'll develop your technical and practical skills. You get to practice things you're learning in the college whilst you're out on placement. In some cases, you may be lucky enough to learn new skills. Then you therefore you can bring them back into college and share with your peers and quite often share with your tutors. You'll gain technical knowledge and skills in the workplace that can help you with the course you are studying and it can be applied to your college coursework, which is great. It may help you improve prove your grades in the long run. Um, I mean, what a great motivator. Having a wealth of relevant experience behind you gives that added advantage to get you foot in the door. And we'll talk a little bit about that later on. But at interview, you can demonstrate the skills that you've learnt whilst on placement, whether that be a 14 day placement or the longer placements. And you can talk about your experiences with conviction and confidence relating your competencies to real life situations and bringing your application form to life. Because if you think if you're an employer and you had a job role available for a um, front of house for 16 to 18 year old, probably, uh, if you were to send a CV and you've got no experience in there and then you have one that's got some experience from a 16 to 18 year old that's done some work experience, then as an employer, you're more likely to look more favourably at the one that's got some experience in it. So it's great to have that experience. Whilst on placement, you get to meet lots of different people. You can network, you can speak to anybody. And I would suggest that to any student while you're out on placement. Talk to everybody and anybody. Find out where they got to where they are. Find out what routes they took. It's a great way to network. It can help you gain a better understanding of the various job roles available uh, and also the different career pathways. It may help you to decide what you want, route you want to take after college. You may also be ahead of the game when apprenticeships and job opportunities are advertised. You just happen to might just be in the right place at the right time. Or if not, you will have built up a valuable working relationship with an employer, resulting in a more meaningful reference. So we do ask the employers when you've done, whether it be the shorter or the longer term placement, to offer references and we will support you in obtaining those from employers. These are the skills employers look for in new recruits, it, that all important work experience when they're trying to spot new talent. So what does success look like? So as you had heard from all the tutors, um, the students can be engaged in so many different opportunities. It can look in so many different formats. Some students may be offered part-time work, we just spoke about. Others use their work experience to gain full-time work or an apprenticeship after college. Several students that I've worked with have 
progressed uh, into paid employment. So Mark was talking before about Jess at the Ivy. She started off as a work placement, as, as Mark quite rightly said. And then after a period of time, they offered her part time work, which she was able to work along her studies. Cameron uh, did a, a full week at fo Hotel Football. He was quite insistent he wanted to go to ho Hotel Football. So I made the link with the employer and they were very keen to take him. He was subsequently offered part time work to work alongside his studies. Um, we've got Liam at Joseph Holtz. He did a, a longer term placement. And again, after a period of time, they transferred that unpaid placement into paid employment and he worked alongside his studies. Joshua works at the monastery and he's the first student at the college to work on the industry placements at the monastery in Gorton. He went one day a week, absolutely loved it, but unfortunately due to COVID, he was unable to continue with it. But he's very, very keen that post COVID he can get back there because he's so he loves being there and his sole aim is to potentially get a part time job there. So how do we get placements? So chat to us. So as I said, I'm Hillary and I'm the employability partnership lead for hospitality and catering. So I will be forever bouncing in your classrooms or post COVID in your webinars just to talk about what the opportunities are that we've got available. I work with the tutors. We source um, all different types of placements and I will sit with you on one to one and see which which suits best which student. It's not a one size fits all. It's all about what you want, where you live. Chat to your tutors in your employability hour. Have a word with them. See if they can access all the information you might need and put you in touch with me. Quite a lot of the opportunities will be on Moodle. Um, which your tutors during the employability hour will support, but I obviously will be in there to support you on um, sourcing work experience opportunities. Come up with some ideas. You might be quite insistent there's a particular hotel that you want to go to. You know, talk to me. We can try and open those doors. We might have connections already. You may have sourced your own placement. That's fantastic if you have. You might have an uncle that works in a restaurant somewhere who's offered you a position. That's great. We still have to make sure that you're safe in those types of environments. So it's very important that the health and safety risk assessments are in place because we are responsible for you and we've got to ensure that you're safe whilst you're out on placement. That's kind of work experience in a flying visit. Uh, no doubt when we see you all in September, be able to catch up with you a little bit more. But that's our team, there's quite a few who work in all areas. You'll probably see us in and around the many campuses at Manchester College. But thank you very much for listening to me. Uh, and no doubt you've got some questions. So I think I'm right handing it back to Mark. Oh, oh Mark, you're on mute. Yes, you are right, Hilary. Sorry about that. Um, got carried away. Um, anyway, no, but that was fantastic. So that all the students really thoroughly understand in what's happening here at the college and our courses. Um, we would like to make sure that uh, you have all the right uh, information for when you join us in September, uh, as well as uh, moving forward uh, post uh, COVID, uh, what it's going to look like when you want coming to enrol all this will be coming to you in due time. Um, it's been great from the team today to have everybody on board, especially Simon taking his time out at the restaurant to talk about the industry and about himself. Catherine, again, um, for the Chefs Forum, the amazing work, what they do together with the Manchester College as the Academy. Uh, but let me just re reiterate that don't forget, we've got this the ongoing quiz going on. And if you can submit all your answers to the to the quiz questions, uh, if you can do that uh, by again 12, 12 o'clock on Friday, uh, email them in, uh, which an email address will come out shortly on uh, the sidebar. And uh, fantastic! Um, we're all looking forward to seeing you with us in September. I would now like to pass it over to Amy, and thank you very much. Thank you so much. That was absolutely brilliant. The presentation um, and obviously Simon joining us as well. So that was absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much. And we have had sort of quite a few questions which have come through um, the session whilst we've been on. Um, so I'm going to pass you on to Chelsea, who's going to actually um, direct the questions to you guys. Thanks, Amy. So just looking through the Q&A now, we've had quite a few come in. I'm just going to quickly go through them. Um, somebody's asked, so um, I think you talked about a veg um, about vegan being a new trend. Um, is there a course on this? Uh, so I'll, I'll take that one. Uh, yes, I mean, we have uh, we have our course and I'll be, in I'll be introducing that into our uh, units uh, on the full time courses because it is very um, 
important that uh, we come to see that we make more healthier products and look at the different types of ingredients what we'll be using so you will use these you you there will be a course available but also uh, any adults who would like to come to the course uh, we do offer the evening courses um, which is the vegan baking and gluten-free baking so but part and parcel vegan gluten-free all the healthy options will be being taken part within the units what you will study coming onto a full-time program Great, thank you. Um, we've got somebody else here who's asked, what advice would you give to a young chef? Well, Alex. Alex. Um, advice to give to a young chef, just enjoy it as much as you can. Um, there's a bit of a stigma with the catering industry that it's a high uh, stress environment and there's a lot of pressure. And, uh, you know, it's not like that at all. You know, we're all really laid back. Um, we want to enjoy work as much as possible. So just turn up with a with a positive attitude and a can do attitude and uh, you'll have a really fantastic time with us. Great. Thank you, Alex. Um, we've also got a few questions here about what is your favourite vegetarian dish? And is that on the new menu? I think that's a question for Simon. Is he, is he no longer with us in the room? No, he's had to do a bit of a showbiz appointment with uh, the media, so uh, he's otherwise, you know, not not around. But all of his menus are actually available on his website. So if you did want to have a little look, you could download his his menus, or they could be sent to you if you'd actually like to see see what he's actually conjured up on the vegetarian tasting menu. Great, thank you. Um, somebody else has asked, if I enrol on a culinary course, can I change to bakery? What if I'm not 100% sure on which route to take? Yeah, I'll take that then. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, yes, that, that is also an option. You could uh, first start with us and I'm sure the tutors will all say that they'll, they'll guide you. And if you find that it's not the course for you, there's always that possibility of transferring over onto the bakery and patisserie courses. Uh, it's, it's what has to, it's what suits you. Yeah, uh, that's what's going to make it a success for yourself. So, yeah, of course, there are those chances of uh, swapping over into a different course. Great, thank you, Mark. And um, somebody else has asked, what sort of trips do you offer throughout the year for students? I know you mentioned um, some of throughout the presentation. Is somebody else just kind of give an overview on that? Well, as part of the Chefs Forum Academy program, um, trips and visits are very much included. Um, so we might go to a coffee roastery. We might go to a, a fruit and veg market to do like an apprentice style challenge where you're all given some money to spend a fictitious budget, if you like, and then um, sent back to college to produce a seasonal dish within a certain budget. And then the teams that make the most profit when you sell them to your peers and the teaching staff at lunchtime are the ones that might win a lovely day in the kitchen with a, with a top chef or um, yeah, no, the, the, the scope is endless. You know, we can visit fish suppliers, butchers, you know, to actually see cutting plants for butchery, front of house as well. When we're allowed again, we'll be able to visit restaurants, have a nice show round or hotels as well. Um, maybe do some table layups, maybe make some mocktails. The scope's really endless, but we want to make you work ready. We want to make you, you know, introduce you to industry while you're still learning. So you get a great feel for the industry, you know, while still at college. Great, thank you, Catherine. Um, this one is for um, Mark. They said, um, Mark, you said I have to do assignments. Um, will I have a folder to keep all my work in? How will I present it? Well, what's been a what's been a success over this year and last year when we first started it was our online portfolios makes it so much easy for you to do and to keep a top on top of your work uh, whilst with us at college um, and I'll be there guiding you all the way how to set this up but also um, being able to give you the insights of making yourself better what needs to be done on the assignments let me though reiterate it's not like uh, at university where you may get 5,000 words um, you, there's a lot to do but behind you for your practical side of work so uh, yeah it's all kept together on an online portfolio great thank you hope that um, helps answer the question um somebody else has asked do i need my own equipment to come onto the course we've also had a few questions of a similar um type um you know is there a you is there a uniform and um, do i need my own chef's knives yeah i'll answer that one if you like all right, so um, as far as uh, equipment and knives are concerned, we provide um, 
uh, all the knives and equipment that you'll need. Uh, last thing we want you doing is walking around Manchester with your own chef knives. It can cause a whole manner of problems. So we provide all the knives um, that you're, you're going to need. Um, as far as your chef whites, um, at the beginning of the course, we've got a, like a pro form that you can fill in um, and send that away. And the, there's a cost incurred, but we, chat, we get it at a bit of a discounted cost. And then you'll get a uniform delivered to college. So that'll be um, safety shoes, chef whites, pants, apron, everything that you're going to need for, for your time at college with us. Um, and, and we'll provide all the food and all the, uh, all the equipment. So you just need to worry about getting your chef whites sorted, but we'll help you through all that as soon as you on your first couple of days in college. Great, thank you very much, Alex. Um, somebody else has asked, um, how will coronavirus affect college from September and what safety precautions will there be? I'll take that one. Yeah. OK, um, obviously within the college itself, social distancing will be uh, in place. Um, uh, our last conversation with management was it's going to be two metres. We're going to stick to that. Um, classroom sizes will be restricted. Uh, timetables are still being looked at as we speak. Um, for practical sessions, they'll be all right. There'll be limited numbers within the kitchen. Uh, so that sort of has a knock on effect for teachers, but not so much for the students. Um, in the training restaurants, that uh, will be need to be discussed as to what we're going to do customer wise, because we have members of the public who also want to come in. Um, they're itching. I've already had inquiries about Christmas bookings already, but we're going to review that what's uh, required from the government, what they're saying. Obviously, at the moment, it's 30 groups of 30 people only or less. Um, I can see Christmas is going to be uh, hopefully wrong, um, we'll, but, but we'll, it's under, it will be under review constantly. But um, face masks, equipment, things like that, you will, it will be available uh, for students and for staff as well. Great, thank you. Um, so somebody else has asked, um, what will a practical session in the restaurant consist of? OK, the, the practical session in the restaurant will be um, some, there'll be some introductory theory as to why we're doing uh, a particular task. It will be how do you do that practical task and we'll make sure that you thoroughly understand the reasons for why we're doing it and then we'll prepare the restaurant for the style of service that we're working on. Uh, we will liaise with the kitchen to find out what the menu will be and we'll be briefed on what the menu is and the ingredients uh, to meet our uh, dietary requirements. And then um, there will be then uh, the restaurant will open and customers will come in and we will deal with you working we will do some role play beforehand. We're not going to drop you straight into uh, problems, uh, but you know we want you to to enjoy yourself whilst there. We don't want those wallflowers. We want you to be mixing and talking to uh, not only your colleagues and your peers, but to tutors and also to the customers as well. And it's just practice. Um, front of house is a lot of practice. Uh, and repetition and getting used to actually being with strange, strange uh, customers, as in you don't know them and you need to meet them. Great, thank you very much. And um, we've got someone here who's asked about um, work placement. And um, here this morning, maybe for you. And um, do I have to find my own work placement? No, not as I was saying earlier. Not unless you've got an uncle that works in a restaurant that's more than happy to offer you one. That's what we are there for as a department. We will support you together with the tutors in sourcing an appropriate work placement, and we'll start. We start doing that over the summer period. And in fact, we have some in place now. But obviously, a little bit looked a little bit different than it would because obviously we're coming out of uh, COVID. No, but that's something that we will support you on. Great, thank you. We've just got one final question. And um, somebody said, um, if I fail my exams, do I get the chance to resit them? I'll, t I'll take that one. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, when you do your written exams, yes, you do have uh, the chance to resit the written exams. Um, so the exams are placed in different windows. Uh, for the technical patisserie, it's usually uh, February to February and in uh, March. And in between there, if you've 
failed one exam, you can resit it in between. So it's, uh, it's the awarding bodies are quite flexible. You've got the chance of one resit. Great, thank you. Um, and is there anything else anybody you would like to add? No. Amy, I'll pass it to you then. OK, thanks, Chelsea. And um, I just want to say thanks again to, to everybody for joining us and for the uh, really, really thorough, informative um, hospitality and catering session that we've had this afternoon. Um, just just to remind everybody, we do have um, sessions next week for sort of student experience. So you can sort of hear from the teams about what it's really like to be a student at the Manchester College and um, also more employment sessions as Hillary's um, presented today. So there's going to be Hillary's team are going to be on um, asking, answering all sorts of questions about um, employability as well. If you go to tmc.ac.uk and click on Couch to College, you'll be able to go on the full timetable there and book on your session. Um, just left me to say thank you very much again and we hope you have a lovely afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.